In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 top tier title tips in Final Cut Pro that you absolutely need to know. Tip number one is that you should change your default title. If I push Control T on my timeline, you'll see that it drops in the basic title. When I select this title, you'll notice that under the publish parameters here in the title inspector, we don't have any attributes we can adjust. So what I recommend instead is that you search up the custom title in your titles and locate that, then right click and select make default title. If I push control T now, you'll see that I have the custom title and in my published parameters, I have so many more options. For example, I can adjust stuff like the in position, the in scale, the rotation, the tracking, the blur. We could change it to be randomized and we could even change the speed to be eased. So if I push play, I now have this crazy title animation that just wouldn't be possible with the basic title. I also recommend that you find your second most used title and right click on it, then select make default lower third. So in this example, I'm using my ProZooms plugin. www.thefinalcutpro.com By selecting that, I can now push Control Shift T and I now have access to my ProZooms plugin, which I can use very quickly down on the timeline. Have you ever made a typo in a title that you have throughout the entire duration of your video? For example, I have this little lower third animation of my channel name popping in, but you'll notice that I accidentally spelt it as the final cut toe. Ouch. Now it might feel like you need to go in and replace each of these individually, but there's a very handy feature in Final Cut Pro. To use this feature, go up to edit, then go down to find and replace title text. Now all I need to do is type in at the final cut toe and we'll replace it with at the final cut bro. If you need to get a little bit more granular with it, you do have those options here, but we can just go ahead and select replace all and you'll notice now that all of these properly say at the final cut bro. Tip number three is how you can adjust multiple titles at the same time. In this example, I accidentally set up my text in a place that I don't want it. I want all of my text to be down at the bottom of the screen. To do that, all I need to do is select both titles. Then we can go over to the transform tool, which can also be achieved with shift T. Then we can go ahead and click on this center anchor and drag down. Now it's very important that you click directly on the anchor and not just in this empty space, otherwise this won't work. But now that I've done that, both this first title and second title have been moved to that new position. Another thing you can do with multiple titles selected is you can go over into your text inspector and most things in this text inspector will apply across both titles as the adjustments are made. However, if you're doing it from the title inspector, that is not going to change both titles. So in this example, we could adjust the scale to be a little bit larger, maybe have more in our tracking, and we could even scroll down and adjust the color to be this nice orange color. Now both titles have been adjusted at the same time. Tip number four is how you can apply a gradient onto your text. Selecting your title, you can go over to your title inspector and scroll down and you'll see the options for face, outline, glow, drop shadow. Go ahead and click on show for your face. In here, of course, we could change the color of the text, but did you know you can change it from a fill color over to a gradient color? Wow. Now we can adjust these colors however we like. We could also click on this white bar to add in an opacity point then we can drop this opacity down to zero and you'll see that we have this nice kind of fade off with our text. There are so many other options you can play around with with this gradient text, but to keep this tutorial short, I won't show those. It should also be noted that you can do this with the outline. So by enabling that, we can go into our gradient options and set this gradient however we like. Another simple but really cool feature with titles is have you ever decided later on that you wanted all of your text to be in caps? Well, if you scroll down in your title inspector, there's this little option for all caps. Go ahead and enable that. You'll also see that I have control over what size each of these characters are. So if we wanted the all caps to be much smaller, we could do that or we can bring them up to a full 100%. That way we don't have to push caps lock or hold down shift while we're typing in all of our text. So with tip number six, you've gone in, you've added the gradients to your text, you've added your outlines and drop shadows and glows, you've set your font size to the correct size. Did you know that you can actually scroll to the top of your title inspector and you can save a preset? 
save format attributes and save appearance attributes. Your format attributes are gonna have to do with your font size, what type of font you're using, the alignment, your tracking, your baseline, and your all caps options. Whereas your appearance options have to do with your 3D text, your face, your outline, glow, and drop shadow. If you want to, you can save both of them in a singular preset or you can save them individually. So if you happen to find that you like a very specific font but you don't want all the colors to be saved with it, then I recommend you do save format attributes. However, if you really like all of these colors that you're always selecting but you don't always want that exact same font, then maybe you want to save just the appearance. Once you've saved your preset, you can go ahead and select it right here from your different presets. And once you've saved your preset, anytime you need it, you just need to click on this massive button at the top and select select it from this menu. Now have you ever run into the issue where you're trying to move your title over and you start to notice that it's getting cut off? Well there's a very simple reason for this. That is because you've moved this title by using the transform tool right here. I'll select that transform tool and you'll see the bounding box. Wherever that bounding box is, is wherever your title can go. To fix that issue, go ahead and move your title back into the center. Then we can go ahead and disable our transform tool by clicking on it or you can push A. From there we can go ahead and move this title around on our screen wherever we need to without worry of it getting cut off. Now with tip number 8, this is a super simple thing but once you know about it, it's going to change your life. Have you ever been trying to work with text and you just have this super tiny box here? Well it's pretty easy to look over the fact that there's these three dots indicating that you can actually expand this out. Wow. So you can just click and drag that down and now I have plenty of space to type out all my text. And if you need even more space, you can go ahead and double click on this gray bar at the top and that will expand your inspector. So now I can drag this all the way down to the bottom of the screen and have as much space as I could possibly need to work with all of my text. Tip number nine, oftentimes with templates and titles that you might have purchased online, you'll go to your transform tool to move it around on the screen and you'll notice that the background is also moving with it. This is specifically an issue because in the motion template that was created, they left the title background. Plugin developers, please, if you're not utilizing that, just delete it makes all of our lives a lot easier inside of Final Cut Pro. So how can we get around this? Well, there are a couple different options. One is to simply right click on your title, then select new compound clip and push OK. Now from there, I can move this title to wherever I need and it won't be affecting the background. Another option is to go ahead and move the title underneath the overlaying video. From there, select that overlaying video, go into your video inspector and change the blend mode from normal over to behind. Now you'll see that this overlaying video is now behind the title and I can move this title around with the transform tool and it's not affecting this overlaying layer. And finally, tip number 10 is how to get a favorites folder with all of your best titles. This is a feature I've been begging Apple for for a long time and I hope to see it someday in the future. But for right now, here is a quick workaround. To get this favorites folder directly into Final Cut Pro, go to your finder, locate your motion templates folder, which is usually found inside of your movies folder, then locate your titles. From there, we can create a new folder and I recommend you add an emoji at the beginning. By adding this emoji, it's placing it at the top of the title stack. From there, you can call it favorites or whatever you like. After that, we can go in and copy and paste any of the titles that we want to be in this favorites folder. So I have my adjustments, I'll copy that and paste it. We could apply my Pro Zooms plugin, so on and so forth until we have everything we need. Once we've done that, we can jump back into Final Cut Pro and you'll see that it's automatically updated with those favorites. After that, I can just click and drag these down onto the timeline. Now, there are a couple things you really need to consider with this. One is that if this plugin ever gets an update, you're going to need to manually copy and paste it into your favorites folder. Secondly, if you delete anything inside of your favorites folder, this will easily break your old projects that are utilizing those favorites. If you do get into a circumstance where you want to delete something out of your favorites folder but you don't want to break old projects, what you can do is go into your finder and locate your favorites folder. Right click on it, then select compress. Once you've compressed the folder, then you can delete it. Now if you go back to one of those old projects and you find that something is broken, unzip that newly compressed file and it should fix any of your old projects that have a broken or missing title or plugin. So that was 10 top tier title tips. 
for Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may want to check out this video where I show you five hidden tips inside of Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.